Bitiche. <laughs> Good morning, beautiful souls, and welcome to um, a beautiful morning, um, Saturday morning in Mijas Pueblo. Um, the sun's over there, just coming up. Um, I don't know what time is it. It's nearly nine o'clock. I've just been doing a bit of spring cleaning, ready for uh, the courses that are about to happen here. I'm very excited. Um, great start to the year. Um, Two people have just booked um, from Hawaii to come to the Heart Healing Retreat this morning. So uh, I'm just so excited. It's going to be such a wonderful uh, retreat and a wonderful year. Okay, guys, um, I'm going to slightly change um, the format of what I've been doing. And the reason why is because many of you have been asking me um, the deeper questions about how do I find my life path, how do I do this, how do I do that, in regards to a spiritual journey, and, you know, please explain to us, you know, how you came to understand from being a non-believer to a believer, and I thought about it, I really did, and I thought, you know what, what I'll do is I'll share um, some stories with you of my journey, to be able to give you some insight of why I, why I, now, truly 150% believe there is such thing as the spirit world and how they help us along our journey and how I came to the point where I am now knowing 100% that, as my father used to say, when we die, we turn to dust and that's it. And my belief is the absolute, absolute opposite. So... Um, I'm going to share some stories over these coming weeks with you uh, rather than self-help and hopefully within the messages, within the stories, there are messages in there that help um, confirm things to you, okay? So uh, I, it's difficult because I've got a thousand and one stories to share with you and these stories are what happened. They are not um, ego stories. They are stories that kind of... Um, you know, they are truth, okay? My first mentor worked uh, a short while. Um, she didn't actually tell me how long for, but um, the FBI used to ring her up on cases of cult uh, murders and um, all that kind of stuff. And she asked me at one point, would I like to do that? And I said, absolutely not. I'm not the sort of person that, you know, would want to, for people to ring me up and say, where's my set of keys? Or, you know, my dog's got lost. Um, that, you know, the, you know what I want to do? I want to help people find their, their spirituality, their happiness. I'm not bothered about the ego side of stuff. You know, I found this and, you know, I've helped. That, 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 that has never played a part in my life. I have never wanted that. However, there are times when you read, when you feel things that it is so profound that you, it blows you away, you know? And I think a true reader, uh, this is my own personal opinion, okay? A true reader and seer and healer um, is as shocked as the client is when something wonderful happens or when something wonderful comes out, you know? It's like, wow, where did that come from, you know? Maybe there are some readers out there who just know it. They just have that real gift in power. Me, I had to work damn hard. And I worked day after day after day after day after day. And um, to, uh, you know, a, a lot of the times sacrifice my life, but it, it felt that this was my life. So practice makes perfect. So when you come here to the academy to learn how to read, um, the spiritual cards, how to learn how to heal. My my biggest motto is practice, you know, practice makes perfect. So, okay, let's think of something, okay? Um, maybe I'll go to my book. I wrote a book called Diary of an Accidental Psychic, um, and in that book was all true stories. In fact, the funny, the funny thing is, when I first wrote that book, this is just things that spring to mind, this is what I'm just telling you now. <laughs> I was kind of quite, um, my status on Facebook seemed to be growing really fast. And people were coming from nowhere and um, they were, all of a sudden there'd be a barrage of one guy's uh, anger and frustration. Um, and, 
you know, after one story was mentioned, he this one guy would st steam in and say, what a load of crap and nonsense and, you know, about a certain story. And then underneath that, I'd be giggling because underneath that, every story that I wrote about, every person in that story is just about on Facebook. They're all my friends. So they'd say, excuse me, uh, excuse me, are you actually saying he's a liar? Are you calling Mark a liar? Because this story is about me. And then, you know, of course, they, 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 they keep all warriors, I call them. They, they run away. They put their tails between their legs and they're off. You see, I think what makes somebody um, a good, um, not, not just a healer or a reader, but a good person, is somebody who speaks the truth. And it's too easy to exaggerate and overemphasize and lie. Um, and a lot of the times when people do that, it's because they are suffering a lack of self-worth. Whereas to me, this kind of field of work was so exciting. I was like a big kid. So the story, one of the stories that's springing to mind now was about a lady who came to my very first shop, which was called Run by Angels. And I remember she came up the stairs and she was very teary. And she walked up to me and she said, I've been told you do um, free angel card readings. And I said, yes. She said, would you be able to try and give me a read and help me a little bit? And I said, I'll do my best. So I started to read and um, you see it's all coming back now. And I'm going to start to cry, so I'm not. Okay, so all of a sudden I felt this overwhelming energy next to me and all my arms and the back of my neck just stood up and I felt this cold like pass through me and then my ear went uh, pop and then <whistles> so instinctively I knew there was somebody in the spirit world next to me at this moment. And I can't explain why, but I just knew it was somebody extremely close to her and it felt like a husband. So I started relaying what I felt this soul was saying. Remember, I didn't know who it was. So I'm, I'm as, as in the dark as, 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 well, she's not in the dark. She knew straight away who it was. So she started crying and I started giving her all this information and I started relaying and then I realized it was definitely a husband who was talking because he was saying many um, things. And anyway, we gave each other a hug after the read, she left and I sat down and I I, I don't know, something was missing. I, I, I couldn't put my finger on it, but it just, what was missing? What did I miss out? What did I do? I, I, I kind of felt this feeling that, I needed to, to do something or to tell her something, but she'd gone. And Mias Pueblo is a very busy place in the summer. So there was like hundreds of people walking up and down because it's a tourist place. So then I sat down and just said, you know, Mark, you did your best. That's all you can do. And as I was thinking that, all of a sudden from above me, lands on the floor, um, a bookmark, a spiritual bookmark. And I picked it up and I read it and I burst into tears. It was, it was for her. I knew it. So now I'm in the shop. Um, obviously, I've got no other staff. It's just me. I couldn't leave the shop. I didn't know what to do. So at the time, um, my uh, wife that I was with then, Susie, had a shop called Tickle Pink. And I don't know why. And I have no idea why now, but I rang Susie and said, there will be a lady who walks into your shop. She'll look like this. Uh, she'll have this color hair, da da da. Uh, she'll come into the shop and don't worry, she'll come up to you and you'll know who it is. Tell her to come back round. And Susie said, what are you talking about? I said, just please listen and do it and, and it'll be fine. I just knew she would walk into Tickle Pink and I just knew Susie would know. Of course, within uh, 20 minutes, the lady came back round and I said, I was sat down, I was thinking about you and, and I knew there was a message, another message. And then from, from above, up here, the wind blew or whatever and it landed right down on my feet. This is for you. She read the message and she burst into tears again and she gave me a hug.
and then everything had gone then. I was at peace and I knew she was. You see, dear friends, when we die, which we don't, we actually go home. There's no such thing as death. And when we go home, we have more power and more amazing energy than you could possibly imagine. We are more alive. We see this world with our open eyes and we can help as far as their path allows, which are your children or your grandchildren or your wife, your, your, your pets. You know, we have a great power. We just don't realize that power. If we realized how powerful we were, and believe me, I've only tapped into 1% of my gift. If you tap into your gift, even 1%, you would start to realize that there is more to life than eating, drinking, sleeping, and working. You would realize that there is a magical world out there, more powerful and more amazing than what we ever could believe. I have spent 13 years trying to find that magical world and I have caught glimpses of it. And I am not saying it will take you 13 years because you may have a stronger gift than me and it may only take you a few months or a few weeks or it may only take you a day. But I am here to tell you with my hand on my heart that there is such thing as another world, a world where I call home, where we are at the most perfect, peaceful and I can't even put into words how I feel when I tune into that world. It is pure bliss. So don't ever fear death because we don't die. We go home. This was just one of the stories I'm going to share with you over the coming weeks. And this story helped me come to understand and believe that there is such thing as an afterlife and that they watch over us and protect us day by day and they love you with all their hearts. So if you've lost somebody to the spirit world, maybe after this video, shut it off, shut your phone off, close your eyes and just be with them, call them, ask them to come close and tell them how much you love them and miss them and then listen and open your mind and your heart to their answer. It may be a brief whisper. It may be a feather. It may be something that you just thought, how could that possibly happen? That's them. They're amazing and they love you as I love you too. Have a lovely day, guys. Till tomorrow. I love you with all my heart. Take care. Catch that.